Hi guys, Brexiteer Andrea Jenkins and Remainer or Rejoiner Don Butler clashed somewhat over whether Brexit has succeeded and it was absolutely painful to watch. So Brexiteers like Jenkins will, when pushed to provide examples of how Brexit has succeeded, will admit that things are not going great. But the reason is always something unrelated to a country imposing economic sanctions upon itself or ending access to a labour force that helped grow the economy. It's the war in Ukraine or the pandemic. Here Andre chose the latter. But while Don did push back, there's a fundamental problem with the Brexiteers' argument or excuse. Have a listen. It's a mixture of, well, both in the fact that I think it's politicians across the house is being still trying to um, stop Brexit. Um, we've seen people um, out, outside. Though, isn't it? No, not really. We've seen people um, who, you know, still taking to the streets, the Remainers who haven't accepted Brexit. We've seen institutions, we've seen um, civil servants. You know, when I was a minister myself, we've seen civil servants who are still trying to stop Brexit. Can I... Wait, wait a minute. OK. I, first of all, I thought Boris Johnson got Brexit done. She's an advocate for Boris Johnson. So I thought Boris Johnson got Brexit done. So how can you stop Brexit if Brexit is done? And second, Brexit, I believe, was to leave the European Union. The UK has left the European Union. All of this stuff that we're looking at after is the consequence of leaving the European Union and the single market in particular. So anyone trying to mitigate the consequence of Brexit, you have a problem with that. You can't, have, you can't say that people are stopping Brexit because the UK has left the European Union. That was Brexit. That was what was on the ballot paper. So how can people stop something that has already taken place? Now, remember, Brexit has not been fully implemented. But leaving the European Union, that has taken place. How can you stop that? Uh, and uh, l- l- let me finish and you'll have your turn. We'll go to you, don't worry. Dawn as well. So I think it's a mixture, but, but let's not forget the impact of COVID. So we, I don't think really we've been given the chance to, to really embrace um, Brexit and the opportunities. I think that is the, this is the problem with Brexit. This was a problem with it in the beginning. Like you're trying to make it fit into a certain narrative and a certain box. The realities and the problems of Brexit isn't made up. We're living through it now. So it's not like, well, because of COVID, that's why there's going to be a border. No, this is the fact that's happening now. So you can't use that kind of pretense that you used before. And I think it's disingenuous to people as well to even try. Do you think Rishi Sunak's, um, you know, delivering on Brexit? Well, I mean, I think he... believes in it? I, I I mean... They said he voted to leave, but I was the, you know, vote leave MP coordinator for the whole of Yorkshire, so I didn't see him campaign. um. Now, I can't seem to find the image, but I remember there was an image of Rishi Sunak in the countryside, a younger MP at the time, claiming that it would be good for UK farming to leave the European Union. So he was part of some campaign. But Rishi Sunak has said on a number of occasions that he's a Brexiteer. (laughs) So, <laughs> like we have a here a Brexiteer complaining about another Brexiteer not being Brexity enough. Myself, um, I I just think that circumstances of you know what happened and globally with COVID, um, external factors, internal wranglings also within the party and with um, opposition MPs. I think really it's it's caused this knock on effect to to take our eye off delivering that, and I think that's very sad and. Okay, so there's a fundamental problem here that Brexiteers are some, somehow allowed to avoid when they're being questioned. Point to something that's a benefit of Brexit. Because it, they keep saying, well, we haven't succeeded because of the pandemic or we haven't succeeded because of the war in Ukraine. But what they need to be asked is, okay, let's put Ukraine aside for a moment and the war in, uh, sorry, the war in Ukraine and the pandemic aside for a moment. Give us an example of, of how people's lives have, in, have improved since the UK left the European Union. Because you can say, okay, they have improved it to this quantity, but this quantity could have been much higher if there wasn't the pandemic, if there wasn't the war in Ukraine. But they haven't even that. They can't say people's lives have increased by 5%, but it could have been 10% or it could have been 15% if it was because uh, well, if the war in Ukraine hadn't taken place or the pandemic. But they don't even have that. They have nothing to point to. Sovereignty. 
taking back control as long as you don't look at borders where goods are coming in and not being checked. They have nothing. Trade deals that add 0.04% to GDP. There was a trade deal with Mexico that added £50 million over 10 years. £50 million. Not £50 billion, Not £5 billion, Fifty million over ten years. Memorandums of understanding are sold to the public as trade deals. It's pathetic. They have nothing. You would imagine that people who still believe in this would be able to roll off uh, real benefits, not sort of tricks or misunderstandings or things that, well, we could have had this if it wasn't for the pandemic. Because if, if there's a real benefit of Brexit, it may have been impacted by the pandemic, but you'd actually be able to point to it. And they can point to nothing. And they keep saying that, yes, it was a good idea to leave. And finally, later on in this interview, in another part of this interview, she said, well, it was the democratic will of the people. Well, wouldn't it be the democratic will of the people if they decided, actually, we'd like to undo all of this damage. We'd like to actually rejoin the European Union. If you're a Democrat, then you should, I believe, support that. I don't think Andrea would support that. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.